Before we get into this episode, I have to test if they kept the best feature from 3D Pokemon games in. <gasps> yes! We can still spin in place! Oh, this is so glorious! And it looks like we're spinning even- Oh my god! They made it even better. <laughs> Welcome back! To Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last episode we began our new adventure here in the Paldea region and as you can see behind us right now is the legendary Pokemon Goraidon because I am of course playing through Pokemon Scarlet which you can also tell from the color of my pants. Anyway it looks like Goraidon has fallen and cannot get up so we're gonna be helping him out and hopefully taking a ride on its back to explore the first truly open world Pokemon region. So if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button. And if we can hit 5,000 likes, I will upload the next episode. How you doing, little buddy? The mysterious Pokemon seems to be too weak to move. Maybe you can give it something to help it perk up. What, like a potion? Is that really what they expect us to do? I mean, thankfully I have quite a lot of them here. I feel like a regular potion's not gonna cut it. Yeah, maybe try something else. Wait, the sandwich that our mom gave us? Yo, that's why it went automatically to the key items. Oh my gosh. I was wondering what we were going to do with that sandwich. Does Goraidon really want it? Bro, this is oddly wholesome. Like I'm getting a how to train your dragon vibe right now. Jump, nom, 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 nom. Yes, my little dragon. Well, I shouldn't say little. Goraidon's actually pretty big. And it is now cheerful as can be. I'm gonna name you Flappy. Well, maybe not yet, because I don't think we unlock the flight mode until a little bit later. I'm actually not sure about that, but I highly doubt we can use all of the features right off the bat. Wait, wait up. Hold up. Where are you going? I didn't even pick a name for you yet. You think that sandwich was free, bro? Oh my god. Okay, fine. You can keep the sandwich, man. I'm good. <laughs> whoa, whoa. What are you doing? Huh? What I don't is going Super Saiyan? Oh my god. He really is. What the frick? My dude. What is this? What I don't powered up. Wow, this is why I picked Pokemon Scarlet. Like, I'm sorry, Miraidon fans, but just look at him. He looks so badass, especially in this form. Oh no, my friend. <laughs> that was so sad seeing our character like stretch out his hand like, no, please don't go. We just met. Well, I guess we got to go chase after our legendary. Oh, what the heck? Just popped right into existence again. Wait, are you waiting for us? All right, fine. I guess I'll chase you for a little bit. Here we are in the Inlet Grotto, which does seem more like the Inlit Grotto because kind of just lit up out of nowhere. Even though I don't think it was supposed to, but what is going on with these uh, glowing plants over here? Nimona? What are you doing up there? There you are! You okay? You're not hurt, right? Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Our Rotom phone saved our lives out of nowhere. I guess I'm managing just fine. Thank goodness! I was really worried! If you'd gotten hurt because I said we should go looking for whatever made that cry... Uh, no, never mind that. Right now we've got to focus on getting you back up here. You've just got to find some way to climb out of there. If you can get close enough, I'll try pulling you up with one of my Pokemon's moves. Ooh, are we going to get to see one of Nimona's other partners? Hey, what's that super strong Pokemon? Seems like it's waiting for you. Talk about Koraidon? Yeah, he is pretty strong actually. And he just so happens to be my new best buddy, so you better watch out, Nimona. I know you were hyping up last episode how apparently you've got some really strong Pokemon on your team. Somehow I don't think they're as strong as, uh, Cory here. That's right, I get to call him Cory because we're tight like that. And I mentioned it last episode, but I really, really love how quick you can pick up items in this game. Like, you don't have to actually stop and, like, do the whole little jingle. You just walk on by and grab them. It's like a grab-by. 
it's quite a few new Pokemon here in this cave, or well, I guess not new, but in this game at least, we hadn't encountered them yet. Like Diglett and Young Goose, and it looks like there's... Oh my god, what the frick? Bro, I can't... What? What's going on up there? Do you not want me to go get this hidden item down here? Come on, seriously? That's lame. Thought this whole thing was about how we could explore and go wherever we want. Kodaidon's throwing a tantrum over here just because I want to go grab a Pokeball off the main path. Like, what the heck? Horde battle? Anyone remember those from Pokemon Sun and Moon? Except there's like 10 times as many Pokemon here. And <laughs> I thought Kodaidon was going to just scorch them to bits. But no, just a little roar is enough to scare him away. Hey, heads up! Some pretty rough and rowdy... Uh, excuse me, I was reading that. Okay, I got a little bit turned around. Can we actually get this one? Like, is the game gonna let me? Okay, thank goodness. We gotta revive. I mean, these items aren't the most important, but... You know, I'm a bit of a completionist. I like exploring. I like getting absolutely everything that we can. So, I'm a little bummed out that we couldn't go grab that item... Down on the lower path. Okay. Flexing a little bit. I like it. Can we go through though? Like, <laughs> just gonna stand around there? Straight up pulverize that rock. Man, I wanna set up what? Maybe setting the tech speed to fast was a bad idea because I can barely read what Nimona's saying in time. Behind you! It's behind you! What's behind? Oh! Houndoom. You really think you can square up to Koraidon? Oh, this Houndoom is in for a rude awakening. Oh, wait, what? We have to battle it with Quaxley? Bro, no! A level 40 versus a level 7. What is wrong with this game? Poor little Polly's gonna just get obliterated. Or not? We seem to have switched out. I'm guessing Goraidon's gonna come in for backup. But wait, does that mean that we actually get Goraidon on our team? No, there's no way. I think it's just for the cutscene. Oh my god. Well, I was not expecting him to just tail slap him like that. The Horde of Houndours is back. It's okay, just pet them to death. Oh. That looked like it was going to be an aggressive pet. Help me, Cody! Damn, got some jumping moves. Even Nimona's impressed. <laughs> I love how he's holding us. Way to go! For a second, I thought you were both goners! You thought Koraidon was a goner? No way. Maybe me, I understand, but... Cory here? He had it handled. Is it gonna stay? Oh. I was literally about to say... Whoa! What's wrong? He's out of juice. He needs more sandwiches. Maybe it used up all its power? Well, what is this Pokemon anyway? Kind of looks like a Cyclizer, but I've never seen one quite like this before. And now it looks so different from a minute ago. You think it's okay? It's hard to say that it even looks like Cyclizer. How the heck do you connect the dots there, Nimona? You can't tell either, huh, Orange? Well, all that aside, I'm seriously glad to have you back up here in one piece. You know, that battle down there was really something. You and this fellow look perfectly in sync facing that Houndoom. I mean... What? You didn't even tell it what to do? I guess it's not like you're this Pokemon's trainer yet, huh? Gotta prove ourselves. Oh, good! Looks like it perked up a little. You think this fellow was the one making that mysterious cry we heard before? I love the cries in this game. Like, what even is that? Oh man, oh man! The more I look at this Pokemon, the more mysterious it seems. If you do become its trainer, you gotta let me battle against it. Let's exchange numbers so we can get in touch if we somehow get separated again. Ooh, I got Nimona's number? Okay. The black Rotom phone too? That looks sick. And here, 
this will let you teach your Pokemon a move to help it battle stronger opponents. Swift! There's that classic jingle. I love it. Think before you use it though. TMs can only be used once. That's right. You've both been through enough for a minute. I think we better take a breather. Let's just get to the lighthouse. That'll be a good spot to relax. So is Goraidon just gonna follow us? Like, you good, bro? That was quite a slap you did there. Okay. Maybe he'll just follow us, but we don't quite get to ride on his back. What the heck? So this is what those ledges in the old Pokemon games actually look like? <laughs> I can see now why you can't go back up once you jump. Like, it's crazy. Again, I talked about this a lot in the last episode, but how much Pokemon has improved over time. And now that it's fully 3D, or has been for a couple of years, like, I think the graphics have almost hit their peak. Or maybe not peak, but like, you can actually see what everything was meant to be from way back in that first generation. Well, look who we have here. Why, that little... Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing out here? Wait, you know Koraidon? He's sure staring at him like he does. I'm not talking to you two. You can shove off. What? How dare you? Wait, I know you. Aren't you, Arvin? You're enrolled in the humanities track, right? Aren't you the son of that Pokemon researcher? Professor Sada? Yo! The theories were right! I mean, it was pretty obvious if you looked at, like, the artwork. Doesn't matter who my mom is. Unless she's hot. The real issue here is what in the world this Pokemon is doing out here? And what is this form it's in? I mean, kind of saved my life, bro. I think I owe it at least something. See, we heard the strange cry and we tried to investigate, but Orange fell off a cliff and then... That Pokemon saved him, but it seems like it wore itself out in the process. It got kinda... slumpy afterward. But you should have seen it before. It looked totally different. Super Saiyan even. Well, yeah, as it should be, but it can't fight while it's like this. The form Koraidon takes in battle, that's its true form. Koraidon? Is that what this Pokemon's name is? How'd you know that? I mean, his mom is a professor, so... You can't go in the lab, it's locked. Wait, that's the lab? I don't remember ever seeing you around, but given the uniform, you go to the academy too, don't ya? Goraidon isn't the sort of Pokemon that any old trainer can hope to command. It's special. Special how? What sort of Pokemon is it? You think you're up to ordering Goraidon around? Then how about I test your worthiness? Sure? Well, look at you. Quite the little go-getter. I've been sealing all out of sorts, so I'm gonna use this battle to blast those doldrums away! Excuse me? The who? Oh, okay, that wasn't even the battle music. Now it's kicking in. Our first battle against Arvin. And his partner is a Squovet. I don't know what I was expecting. But it definitely wasn't Squovet. These memories are leaving a bad taste in my mouth. I want it gone! Bro, why is he such a... I'm sure there's a better way to phrase this, but I feel like he's being a little... Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how else to put it, but like, stop complaining, man. Just focus on this battle. You're about to get your butt whooped by a little duck. I mean, he said in a squirrel. It's not like, oh my god, the bite does pretty much nothing. And it looks like in trainer battles, the camera angle goes on its own, as opposed to wild battles where we can actually move the camera ourselves. Like right now, I'm trying to move it and nothing's happening, so... Either it's only in special battles or all trainer battles. I don't really know yet, but what we do know is Arvin sucks. <laughs> Which I guess we kind of knew from the trailers and like the website. What I didn't know is the professor's lab would be inside of the lighthouse. That's awesome. I guess I wasn't ever going to stand a chance using some Pokemon I'd only just caught. Oh, so you have better ones? If you really think you can take Koraidon off my hands for me, you'll need this. It's the Pokeball that Brute's been kept in. <laughs> the f- Bro, just call them a Brute? 
Are you serious? Put some respect on its name. Wait, it's really just a regular Pokeball? So why'd you have it? I mean... Obviously, this guy's got connections. <laughs> anyway, it's your problem, not mine. Good luck! What? Oi! Can you not hear me or something? I think he's choosing to ignore you, Nimona. Fine, be that way! But you better actually show up to s What a weirdo. <laughs> Agreed. Alright, we got ourselves a legendary! In the second episode of the series! That Arvin guy definitely knows more than he's letting on. Next time he and I are battling, I'm gonna wring some answers out of him, oh my god! Oh, alright, we gotta climb the lighthouse. Can't wait to show you the view of our school! Yes, let's do it! I wanna see the whole region! And I wonder if we're actually gonna be able to like, set off from it? Cause, obviously, Koraidon and Miraidon have a land mode, sky mode, and even a swimming mode. Whoa! Okay, here we are! In the Southern Lighthouse! I guess the view's not maybe as crazy as I imagine. I also thought that maybe there'd be something more going on up here, but no, it's literally just a... What? It's like an arrow pointing that way? To the school, I guess? Maybe all of the lighthouses point to like where the center of the region is. Or to the big city, which happens to be Mezigoza! Yes! And that huge building with the Pokeball on it is our school! Hogwarts! I've always wanted to go there! It's gonna be so great having you in the same class, Orange! Looking forward to it! Except schoolwork, I did see that was the other option. Can't wait to get back! We're gonna get to learn so much and battle so 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 much! Isn't it awesome what you can see from up here? I mean, I guess I was expecting a little bit more. <laughs> like, all of the other biomes seem to be hidden behind the mountains right now. But you can definitely see that crazy building on the left there. I think it might be the Pokemon League. And you know what's waiting all over? Pokemon, duh! Consider this me officially telling you, welcome to Paldea! Uh, would have been sick if it cut to like a montage of all the different areas, but anyway, like you can see, it's kind of a hike to get to school from here. I mean, it doesn't seem that bad, honestly. Let's make it to Los Platos for starters. That's right on the way. The plates? Vamos, come on! Okay, Dora, fine, we're going. Our first lighthouse complete! Wasn't quite what I was expecting, like, I guess my main theory was it would be like Breath of the Wild. You get up to the lighthouse and it would do this sort of like panning shot of the area around and then it would unlock on your map, but maybe that'll happen in the future, because I definitely remember that kind of cinematic shot in one of the trailers, but that wouldn't make sense because we already have the whole map unlocked and I totally should have zoomed out more in the last episode, but yeah, we can literally go wherever we want. At least once we get Goraidon. That is quite a big region we got, but Mezegoza is going to be our first stop. And from there, I think we can choose to go wherever. Although Pokemon levels don't scale, so I wouldn't recommend heading off to like the Icy Mountain. Because I'm guessing the Pokemon there will be a little bit too powerful for our Quaxly to take on just yet. But let's begin with uh, getting to that Plate Town and... Our first trainer battle, which in this game, in case you didn't know, trainers no longer challenge you when they spot you. You actually have to walk up to them! If you talk to a trainer like me, it means we're gonna battle! Alright, Tiny Tim, calm your horses there. Or I guess your bulls, because he's got a little Tauros on his shirt, and I wonder... Okay, of course he wasn't going to have a Tauros on Route 1. <laughs> that would be pretty insane if, like, the very first trainer had a Tauros. Like, yeah, I, I don't think uh, it'd be really fair, so. To Round 2, uh, it is, and it looks like we can actually control the camera here in wild, or I guess random trainer battles. Yo, what is that LeChonk doing? <laughs> He's just watching the battle nervously, like, oh god, I hope he doesn't decide to fight me next. I don't want to be minced meat! 
Oh no, why is he so sad? <laughs> oh, cheer up, buddy. I'm sure it's not the only time you're going to be losing today. Anyway, there's another hidden item. Rossberry this time. Hidden items seem to be pretty hard to... Oh my god. Speaking of hard to spot, look at this tiny little guy. Oh, there's two of them actually. One of which looks to be bigger than the other. Or is it? I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell now because one's further. But I do believe that Pokemon are different sizes in this game. Kind of like in Legends Arceus, the same species of Pokemon could have different sizes. And you know me already off exploring to an area that we probably shouldn't be because we're going to get Goraidon in a little bit and it'll probably be way faster to explore then. But I can't help myself, dude. This is how I do it. This is how I'll probably be playing the game for the most part is focusing on exploring first and also the story, I guess. But I remember back in my Legends playthrough, most people in the comments said they're cool with me just enjoying the game at my own pace. Once we have access to it, of course, I'll like focus on taking down the gyms and other stuff, but oh my god, it seems our exploration has been rewarded because we have Wiglets! Or at least we had Wiglets, but I spent so long talking that we got scared back underground. Maybe I have to sneak up to them, or maybe we can just walk into them and still initiate the battle. Oh no, we can't! Yo, what? Wait a minute, what if I throw my Pokeball? It doesn't work! <gasps> I missed my chance to w get Wiglet? Maybe I really do have to sneak up to it. Oh, that's really cool. Different Pokemon have different behaviors. So I guess, uh, what the heck? Magikarp is outside of the water. What are you doing? And what are those sounds? Is that actually Wiglet? I think I do remember that being its cry from the trailer, actually. All right, let me just toss my Pokeball from here then, because I feel like if we get any closer, it's probably gonna run away. So here it is, Wiglet. The pure water type, uh, not Paldean form of Diglett. Because it's actually a completely different Pokemon according to all of the like news that we got about it. But it's still got Mudslap though. So maybe a little bit of that ground typing callback to Diglett. Or just the fact that it lives by the sand, you know. There's no sand attack. Oh wait, there literally is a sand attack though. Why didn't you you what the frick is going on with the Pokeball? I don't know if that's a glitch or just the water. Bro, what wait, what is going on with the Okay, let's pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> Cause we've caught Wiglet! This Pokemon can pick up the scent of a Veluza just over 60 feet away and hide itself in the sand. Well it didn't see me coming, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and give you not a nickname, actually. I like Wiglet just the way it is. I also want to see what its official evolution name could be. What? It's Pokemon number 288? That seems so far. Like, how many Pokemon are in this game? Jeez. Oh my god, Magikarp. Bro, that's so cool. If you guys have never played the mobile game Magikarp Jump, maybe you wouldn't know. Or I guess there was also a Pokemon anime episode about it. But yeah, Magikarp can splash and jump into freaking space. This one didn't quite get to space, but that was a pretty good jump, I gotta say. Alright, let's head back to the main path. Wait, was this item here earlier? Probably was, and I just missed it, because I don't think items in the wild respawn like that. Or at least not that item specifically. Maybe there's other items that do, like the berry that we found earlier, but... We're back on this bridge, and I actually want to check if we can send out any of our Pokémon, or does it have to be in the first position? I'm guessing it does. Uh, you can also restore health right from this menu, which is very convenient. So let's uh, give little Wiglet a potion here and we will send it out so it can follow us. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't actually know how to activate the Let's Go feature, which is like the Pokemon can enter auto battles on its own and grab items for you and stuff. I mean, maybe I can grab items for us. Right now, let's test it out. Oh my god, is that a little deerly? It's sleeping! Oh, that is so cute! Don't do it, Wiglet. Go go grab that item for me. Go make yourself useful. I caught you for- Oh, whoa! It actually did get the item for us. Sick! So I guess I should have had Quaxley out here this whole time, because then I don't actually have to walk up to the items myself and- Whoa, what is that? <gasps> Oricorio! Yo! I did not expect to see Oricorio in this game. We have the pom-pom form as our first one, which I believe is electric and flying. So if you want to 
early electric type. Well, we already had Pommy actually, so if you want an electric type that's from this region, Pommy's probably a better bet. But Oricario is not bad either. <gasps> Fido! Oh! I was not expecting Fido to be this early in the game either. Yo, okay. We can actually press the Y button to automatically put the Pokemon you're hovering over at the first position. Because I do actually want to try out some of the other mons that we caught last episode in battle here. So it's time for Fifi. I mean, Phoebe. I already forgot what I named you. I'm sorry. <laughs> not the most powerful, though, with the Thunder Shock there, I gotta say. I mean,. I guess it's to be expected, it's uh, her very first battle. But as long as we don't get knocked out, we should be fine. I just want to weaken this Fido enough so that we can actually catch it. Because Fido is so freaking cute, and if you've seen its evolution, you'll know that it is even cuter. And even if I don't end up using it like for the whole playthrough, I want to at least see it evolve. Well, maybe there's going to be some in the wild later anyway, but... My point is, I'm trying to catch all of the new Paldean Pokemon, and Fido is one of those, so get in the ball, and Phoebe as well, because we're going to register Fido in the decks. It is smooth and moist, and its yeast induces fermentation in the Pokemon's vicinity. What does that even mean? It means we're going to name you Yee, because uh, I guess it sounds like yeast. <laughs> A new Pokemon has been registered and it's going to be 74 in the deck. So yeah, there's definitely no order really to the Pokemon in the decks it seems. Well, I guess there is an order, but not the order I was expecting. Like, oh my god, is that a Paldean Wooper already? Dude, there's so many new Pokemon right off the bat. What the heck, man? I was not expecting to find like half of the Paldean decks already on the first two routes. I mean, we already have a full team of six and with... Wooper there, and I believe I saw even another one. Have to send somebody to the PC. Thankfully, there is a Pokemon Center right there. So, uh, we could actually catch that little Whoopee. And it's actually this kid that I saw, not another Pokemon. So we might as well battle him. If you can beat me, I'll tell you a cool secret. What kind of secret? We got Zahida, the student. Looks like a preschooler to me. I didn't know they allowed, like, such little babies into this school. Okay. I mean, I did actually know that uh, on the website, before the game came out, it mentioned that trainers of all ages can go to the Naranja or Uba Academy, which is the one in Pokemon Violet. Which is why Nimona, even though she's, like, a little older than us, is still in school as well. I guess we'd be, like, a middle schooler if grades were actually a thing in this world, but... As far as I know, there's people of all ages that go to this school, so I don't think it quite works like it does in our real world. All right, let's go for the little Whoopee. Oh, this is one of the Pokemon I've been most excited for because I want to know what it evolves into. Is it going to be a Paldean Quagsire or entirely new Pokemon? Well, technically I already know, but I don't know if I should actually like spoil things like that during the playthrough. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I don't know, but I'll save it in case somebody hasn't seen it. Like, I'll keep the surprise alive until we evolve our own, just in case you haven't. So for now, just know that it's a mystery whether or not it evolves into Quagsire or not. <laughs> What's not so mysterious, though, is our Pokeball catching it, right? Right? Hey, thank you for not making me look like an idiot. <laughs> So far, we've caught every Pokemon on the first try. Paldean Wooper in the Dex, which is going to be a poison and ground type. After losing its territorial struggle, it began living on land. The Pokemon changed over time, developing a poisonous film to protect its body. Wait, does that mean that regular Wooper are in Paldea too? I haven't actually checked the summary of any Pokemon yet, but you can see there its Terra type is going to be poison. I wonder if maybe we could have gotten a ground terror type instead, or if it's always by default going to be the very first type. Like, even if it has dual typing, maybe it's the one that's listed first. But we can either add it to our party or send it to the box. I think I want to add it in, because we have two water types right now, technically with Wiglet. I kind of wasted a potion healing it, but I didn't want to risk it earlier. Like, if we accidentally got in a battle and it was Wiglet leading the charge, would have ended or could have ended badly. It probably wouldn't have because we can just switch. 
But I think this is actually the way we came, so before I get myself all turned around, let's finally head off to the town. We got seven Paldean Pokemon already, like a little over an hour in. That is amazing. But here we are in Los Platos, and we got our rival over there, as well as the Pokemon Center to check out, which in these games take the form of gas stations. That's right, you don't even have to go in a building anymore, which is awesome for loading times. This here is a Pokemon Center. You can come here to take care of a lot of things related to your Pokemon. But I'll leave the explanation to the pros here. We got Nurse Joy, uh, that guy, and a computer, I guess. Here on my left is the Pokemon counter. You can buy things like balls and potions. Hello, we accept payment in both cash and LP. Oh my god, you take League of Legends points? And this to my right is the TM machine. It's your ticket to making TMs, which you can use to teach your Pokemon moves. You'll need to pay LP and supply the machine with materials. LP comes in handy both at the machines and stores. Here, you can have some. Oh my god, it's like cryptocurrency, bro. She can just give us a direct transfer, okay. Oh yeah, have some of these two materials. That has got to be the weirdest thing I gotta say, like, if you haven't noticed, every time we knock out a wild Pokemon, you get a little bit of, like, materials from it, like Lechonk's hair, or, like, Whooper's gills, I don't freaking know, but it seems a little bit weird that we're just ripping off Pokemon limbs. <laughs> Looks like we're gonna learn about the Let's Go feature, finally, which we can activate with the R button. Auto battles will be decided by the strength and the types of the Pokemon taking part, so keep that in mind when you're choosing which to send out. Okay. In the trailers we've seen so far, auto battles all ended in one hit, like everything was just getting absolutely blasted. So I wonder if we send out like a low level Pokemon, how badly they're gonna get beat up by the enemies. Uh, but let's check out this TM machine, which as I was saying, takes different items like Wooper Slime. Okay, thankfully it's not Wooper's Gills. That would have been a little more uh, macabre, I suppose. But there's things like Mankey Fur. Like, that's a little bit weird. Did we just shear it? I don't know how Nimona got that. Uh, but it seems like if we haven't seen that Pokemon or gotten its item, it just shows question marks. Maybe to not spoil ones you haven't gotten yet. Uh, so let's make a TM for Low Kick. Why the heck not? It looks like Quaxley can actually learn it. So let's go for it. A little bit of Mankey Fur, some leak points, and boom! We can actually teach that right away to... Quaxley, of course, aka RuPaul, the greatest supermodel of the world. Once we leave Los Platos, we'll hit the best known spot in the South Provinces Area 1, the massive hill on the way to school. What? It's just a hill? That's the most famous place around here is a freaking hill? I guess it must not be very uh, exciting around these parts. We're always happy to serve though. I mean, yeah, those small towns have- <gasps> Whoa, the music! Dude, it's totally reminiscent of the first town in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Okay, well, the beginning was, but not anymore. Now it just sounds like its own theme. What is up with this lady? Is she selling ice cream? Oh, yes! I would love some. We got mint chocolate, fizzy pop, mango, teriyaki. What? Teriyaki ice cream. Excuse me? And as you can see, all of these have different meal powers, which will have different benefits, so all of them seem to have humongo power, ice, item drop, catching power, bro, what is all of this? The fizzy pop seems to have XP point power though, so I think I'm gonna go for that one, and I'm guessing it'll raise the amount of experience that we get out in the wild. Fizzy pop ice cream, oh my god. What is this animation? I don't know if I love it or hate it. I mean, okay, I definitely don't hate it, but it was weird for sure. Hmm, <laughs> I want one too, yeah. I'm sure you do, lady. Is this the hill you were talking about? Fletchling, how cute! I don't know why I just imagined them pecking that little girl's eyes out. There's something wrong with me, dude. <laughs> I just feel like if this was real life, like the world of Pokemon would be so much more dangerous than people think. Like, any fire Pokemon is potentially life-threatening. I don't know how people are just so chill about 
owning a Charizard, for example. Like, it just wags its tail the wrong way, and your whole house could catch on fire. Like, Pokemon are actually terrifying, and all these people just seem to not care. Like, look, this girl's taking freaking Instagram selfies with her Deerling. Okay, I guess Deerling is actually pretty helpless, though. Or harmless, I guess. But I don't think we actually have the selfie mode ourselves yet. And I also noticed that we can't go into these houses. But there's, like, plenty of NPCs outside just talking. But it's kind of hard to tell which ones are actually important. Or maybe have like a side quest to give or something. I guess that means it's time to head on to the big hill. Oh wait, there's this lady here. A great spot. Yes, for meeting friends. Actually, I think on this side is where we can activate co-op. But hey, it is actually the Union Circle. Yo, throwback to the Union Room from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And I guess the remakes. If you want to play with nearby friends, you should leave your internet in offline. If you want to play with faraway friends, change to online. When you want to invite friends to play together, form a group, enter the link code, you can do battles, trades, terror raids, and you can even find version exclusive Pokemon by joining another person's world. So if you go to like a friend that has Pokemon Violet, you'll encounter uh, Pokemon Violet exclusive Pokemon and vice versa. But you can also still continue playing your own story even while you're in their world, which is pretty freaking cool. And I'm really surprised they were able to make it work because Pokemon has never really been known for online functionality working all that well. I mean, I guess we don't know just yet if it's going to be buggy or anything, but at least from what I heard, it seems to work pretty well. But we're on our way to Mezagoza now. We still can't quite get on the back of Goraidon, which is a little bit weird. Like I thought by now for sure we would have him. I'm kind of wondering if I should even go off the path anymore, like collecting all those items, because I know that we're going to get Koraidon soon, and what the heck is that? Oh my god, it was Squobet. <laughs> its tail looked like the head of like another weird new Pokemon that I'd never seen. I'm like, bro, they really did hide more Pokemon than what was even in the leaks. That would have been crazy, but no, it was just Squobet. Got a little bit too hypey there. But what is this hill that Nimona is talking about, and is this kid? Someone I battled already? I don't think so. Whoa. I, think I just saw a bird spawn. Wait, what the? <gasps> no way. No way. There is absolutely no way, bro. No, no, no. Don't you dare run away from me. Is that a freaking shiny? It can't be, bro. There is a shiny Pachirisu up in this tree. But I can't get it. How do I get it? Bro, I can't reach it. No, not Hopip! I don't want to fight Hopip! What is this? Okay, fine. I'll get rid of this Hopip just because I need to get back to this. Yo, you better still be in that tree, bro. I can't actually see if it is or isn't. Oh my god, I can't change the angle. I need to know. Is that Pachirisu still there? Bro, I'm just gonna run away. I can't. I'm freaking out right now. This can't be happening. Although I've heard that apparently you can save in front of shiny Pokemon. So I'm gonna test this right now. We're gonna save our game. All right, I got rid of the Hoppip. Now, please tell me the Pokeball automatically goes to... Bro, what are you doing here, Scatterbug? What the frick? I don't want you. Let me try Auto Battle, actually. If it works how Nimona said, then Quaxley should be able to just one-shot everything around it. I mean, it took out the Scatterbug, but go. G kill that Lechonk, too. Gimme. Ahem. Oh, you actually have to click the R button every time you want it to go attack something. Okay, that makes more sense. Oh my god, okay, we took a lot more damage. <gasps> RuPaul, no! He's too hurt to, to beat the Hoppip. Oh, that's not good. I mean, I guess the only thing I can do at this point is try to walk away far enough that the Pachirisu decides to come down. I don't want it to despawn, though. That would suck. If it despawns and then we just miss out on our first shiny Pokemon. <laughs> I like never get shinies, except in Pokemon Legends, but that game was like really easy to get shinies and I guess maybe this game might be too, cause like, we literally found one in the first route, dude. Oh wait, don't tell me. Is it gone? Or is that it? No. No. <gasps> it's gone. No. It's gone, bro. No. This can't be happening. No. I'm not freaking out more because I know that we can like reset the game. It'll probably come back, but how do we get it down from the tree? That's still the question. 
All right, we're back. I reset the game and <gasps> Pachirisu's on the floor. Yo, go, go Pokeball. No, hey, you better not get in the tree. You sneaky little, bro, why is my Pokeball not going at the Pachirisu? Okay, round three. Uh <laughs> oh my God, wait, it's already, what? Dude, you didn't even give me a chance. Please don't go up the tree. Oh my God, what is happening? I literally can't get it. What is this, man? All right, new strategy. I'm just gonna run straight for it and, oh, I was able to encounter it. Yes, shiny Pachirisu, dude. What the heck? That is so insane. Like I knew shiny chances were a little higher in this game, but really on the first, well, technically second episode, we already have one. Now I just gotta make sure not to kill it. Even though, like I just showed you guys, you can save the game right in front of a shiny and it won't disappear afterwards. In fact, it even makes it easier to encounter apparently for some of them. Wait, was that mud shot or mud slap? Oh my God, you have mud shot already, bro? Okay. <laughs> For some reason, I thought that was gonna do way more damage, but it's okay. I think we can go for one more, as long as we don't critical hit it, and then we should be able to catch it, even though we already have another Pikachu clone, so I'm not really sure whether I'm gonna end up using this Pachirisu in the playthrough. It is still crazy that we got one this early. Like, what the heck, man? If you guys are playing the game as well, let me know if you found any shiny Pokemon this early on or just in your first day of playing. Like, this is the earliest I've ever found a shiny, for sure. There is a specifically notorious Pachirisu that won the Pokemon World Championships a couple years ago. And in honor of its trainer, I'm going to nickname this Pachirisu Seijin. I think it's really crazy that we got a shiny this early, so... We'll put away Chuckles for a little bit, just so we can at least show off Pachirisu in battle or even just outside in the overworld. And hit the Y button to make it the lead. And I'm gonna try the auto healing thing. Oh, that's cool. It only heals the Pokemon you're hovering, not the whole party. That is actually really convenient. I love these like little changes that make the gameplay so much quicker. But I will say, I am very, very happy that we got a shiny this early, but why couldn't it be one of the actually new Pokemon? Like, come on, we got Pachirisu, which I love again, but seven Pokemon we've caught so far that are all from Paldea. I would have taken any one of them. Well, I guess minus Quaxley, because I don't think the starter can be shiny, like right off the bat, but you'd probably breed for one later in the game. Anyway, looks like this trainer is actually perfect to test out our new little shiny because he has got a Chuto, which is water type. And that means that our Thunder Shock is going to be super effective. Let's go. We got a shiny on the second episode. Bro, I'm really, really curious if any other YouTubers are going to have this experience. Like, it'd be kind of lame if shinies are just that easy that everyone ends up getting one. Well, I mean, I would be happy if people find one at different points in the playthrough. But I'm talking about like this early in the game. It almost makes me like think that we're going to end up finding a lot more throughout, but chances are that we just got super duper lucky and I'm probably not gonna find any more shinies throughout the whole playthrough. But we are gonna find ourselves a worker over here. Okay, this is an interesting new trainer class. We got Alberto. Yo, I haven't really been paying attention to the names of the trainers, but I'm gonna guess that they're probably all kind of like Spanish names or Latino. I swear I just saw a black Hoppip, but shiny Hoppip isn't black, right? Okay. I'm just paranoid now, bro. I'm like imagining or having hallucinations of every Pokemon being shiny now, but I'm pretty sure that was just Lechonk. And at level eight, Phoebe is going to be learning Charge. It also seems like every trainer so far has only had one Pokemon, which I appreciate. You know, I'm not trying to spend too much time with these random trainer battles. I am wondering though, if maybe you can rematch them in the future. Like maybe you have to wait a little while and they'll want to battle you again because in an open world game I feel like that would be a pretty necessary feature like especially in the late game or post game you know trainer rematches should be a thing but I should probably focus back on getting to the big city which I just realized is now behind me 
I was joking earlier how the big city kind of reminds me of Hogwarts. That bridge literally is straight out of a Harry Potter movie, except maybe a little bit more blocky. Whoa, what's up with this guy? He's got a special text box over him. Is this a side quest? Hello there, I'm a Pokemon League rep. Been having some nice battles. Uh, yeah. If you defeat four trainers here in the South Province, there's a lovely prize with your name on it. I think I actually have defeated four trainers. Yeah. Let's get ourselves a Thunder Wave! Nice! We're holding this challenge for other areas around Paldea too. Stop by and try them. Alright, so that confirms it. Side quests are bubbles that are gold or yellow. Really nice that there's actually a distinction because... I mean, usually in my playthroughs I talk to literally every single NPC hoping that they'll give me some kind of item or something, but... I don't know if I'm gonna do that in Paldea because like the towns are a little bit different. And it doesn't look like you can go in the buildings, but did you know? What? There are all kinds of handy functions. Oh, so we do actually have the camera app. All right. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know, Nurse Joy, because I want to take a nice, cute picture with my new shiny Pachirisu. Maybe by these rocks? What? Gimme cool? What are you doing here? Already we found a Gimme cool too? Don't think I can get up on this rock and get it though. Hold up, maybe I can glitch up. Oh, yo! Actually, that wasn't really, really even that glitchy. But we made it. What are you doing up here, man? Gimme ghoul coin! Material accidentally dropped. It seems that... Okay, that went away quick. I was just trying to take a selfie with my new Pachirisu buddy, but... Uh, I'll take a gimme ghoul coin. Yo, why are you all the way over there, man? Come on, get up on this rock so I can take a picture with you. Alright, fine, I'll try this again. Hold up. Two thousand years later. Fine, I guess I'll just take a picture right here in front of this, uh, whatever this is. We got the camera app, press the down button. I just did that Y button, we'll flip it around. Left and right to change filters, got it. So we're gonna flip it to selfie mode. Where are you at, Sajin? Hello? Ah, there you go. Okay, can I like call him over somehow? We can do, uh peace sign, I guess. Hey, there we go. Oh my god. Yo, he's posing too. That's so cute. How do I actually take the picture now, though? Okay, we can go back and reset point flip. What? Is it just A? Oh, I think I actually have to just press the screenshot button. There's no... Okay, whatever. I missed my chance. <laughs> I suppose that is going to do it for this episode. I know we're going a little bit slow, but that's usually how it is at the beginning of these playthroughs. There's a lot of exploring and checking out the new features and all that. But next time we're going to be heading into the gates of Mezagoza with our shiny little Pachi. I seriously cannot believe we found one this early. Like, I have a feeling this is going to be a banger playthrough. So smash that like button if you're excited for the next episode and I will catch you all in Mesagoza. Goza.